Hello, today we're going to replace the rear shocks in a 1999 Mustang. Okay, we're in the back of the Mustang now uh, with the convertible roof up. And what we want to do is we want to take off um, this perimeter uh, trim panel. And uh, underneath it we'll be able to see um, uh, the upper nut for the uh, struts, or shocks rather. And so we just want to gently pull off uh, this little um, plastic trim and you just gently pull it away from these uh, nuts around the perimeter of the, um, the cover. And then when you pull up uh, this cover and you look down, you'll be able to see the, um, the nuts for the uh, top of the... Okay, so we're right by the wheel well here. And this is the material that I just pulled back from the convertible boot area. And you can see that is the uh, top uh, nut of the shock. So this is the uh, nut we're going to want to remove uh, to free the top of the uh, shock. Alright, with the upper nut exposed, uh, we're going to take a 15 millimeter socket and we're going to undo the top nut. Okay, now that the uh, upper connection has been disconnected for the shock, we're going to undo the lower connection, which is right here beside the tire. It's an 18 millimeter nut and a 15 millimeter bolt. And I'm feeling lazy, so I'm just getting it as an impact. Let's take the bolt out. And then the strut will just pull right out. And now we can put in the new strut. Okay, now up in the body, uh, the original uh, shock comes with one of these uh, through mounts that goes through the body. And it's got a metal sleeve in it, and it's got a, a rubber base. But the uh, new shock uh, comes with these um, special washers and uh, these rubber insulators. So I'm going to remove the Ford factory one and put in uh, the ones that came with the shock. And it's got a small side and a fat side. The fat side goes towards the washer, and then the small side is just intended to go through the through hole in the body. So here's our new shock, and I've got the, uh, the new washer and the new rubber insulator on the top. So we're going to poke that through the hole in the body. There. Don't have to be too precise. But then we're going to have to compress by hand the, um, the shock, and we're going to have to put in the uh, bolt. So we will compress it, and then work it down into the clevis and put the bolt in. Now one thing I forgot to mention, I like to put some uh, rubber grease on the um, rubber grommets that come in the clevis uh, from the new shock. And this helps it slide into the clevis better, and um, also will help mitigate any uh, squeaking. So I'm just going to put a little dollop of the pink grease on the uh, rubber grommets here. And then I'm going to compress the shock again. Actually, I'm going to put some of that grease on the top as well. Okay, I've put a little bit of... Uh, this Toyota rubber lube on the top rubber um, bushing. And we're going to put that through the body. And then we're going to compress the shock. And then insert it into the clevis here. Okay, this isn't going particularly well, so I've bent this ear out a little bit. Um, to try and get the uh, new clevis in because it's just way too tight. I can't get it in there. So let's try that with the clevis bent out a little bit. Let's see if we can get the shock to go in there. So again, we'll put this up through the hole in the body. We'll compress the shock. Oh, there we go. Finally, it looks like it's in. Let's get that bolt to the C. No, nope, maybe not. Right now with the lower bolt in, 
we'll just put the uh, nut in, then we'll tighten it all up. And I'm still feeling lazy, so we'll just use the impact here. Alright, and now with the shock through the body, we'll put on the upper rubber insulator, and then the upper washer, and then we'll put the nut on, and it's a little close to the side of the body, so we're going to want to slide it over just a little bit, and uh, then we'd, we'll just torque it down. Now it might be a little bit... Uh, tricky. If you don't have a power tool to just zip it on, um, you might need to have a wrench to hold on to the flats here, but it's quite awkward because there's not a lot of space in here, so hopefully I have something to just uh, zip uh, the nut on. And you don't want it to be ridiculously tight, you just want it to be uh, reasonably tight. Alright, so here goes with the power ratchet. seems pretty good. Got a little bit of bulge on the insulator there, and that feels just right. Okay, and then what you'll want to do is go outside and bounce the car up and down a couple times and make sure there's no weird squeaks. And if everything seems good, uh, then the other side is exactly the same as this side. I'd call it job done. Alright, thanks for watching.